A few years ago, when I first started my cybersecurity career as a cybersecurity analyst, I made a video about me passing the Splunk Core Certified User. That video had a lot of views. And now, just a few months ago, I have taken and passed the Splunk Core Power User as well as the new Splunk Cybersecurity Defense Cer Analyst Certification, something like that, I think. The video for the Cyber Defense Analyst Certification will be separate from this, but this video is going to be about how to study for and pass the Splunk Core Certified Power User. Back then, when I passed the Splunk Core User, I I was still a cybersecurity analyst and now I'm actually a security response engineer at Amazon and I pretty much use Splunk practically every day. So first and foremost, why did I take this exam? Three years ago when I first took the Splunk Core Power User exam, I was just getting started in the industry. Um, I was just learning how things work and all that stuff and I figured Splunk was one of the tools that was super popular. I was actually about to start a job where I was going to start using Splunk and I was doing a lot of labs on Splunk, learning a lot about Splunk so I figured, you know, might as well just like get good at Splunk. So I took the certification to help me kind of understand like the whole back end and, you know, basics of Splunk and how it works and all that stuff. Now, ever since then, I didn't take any more Splunk certifications because I didn't really need to. So a few months ago, I kind of got an email from Splunk telling me that my Splunk certification I took like three or so years ago was about to expire. So me being me, I didn't really want that certification to expire. And I figured I could also learn some more advanced Splunk stuff and also get the Splunk power user. So why not just go for this power user so it can renew the Splunk core user? So I did just that. And I must preface this by saying I've been using Splunk for quite a while, but I stopped after spending about two years working at Datadog, which is my last role, where I was focusing on doing detection engineering on Datadog's cloud sim platform. So focusing on just working on Datadog sim for about two years just pretty much meant I didn't really touch Splunk for almost two years. But now back in a Splunk environment, now that I'm Amazon uh, over the last seven or so months, I've been using Splunk practically every day. So I figured, you know, it wouldn't hurt to like kind of refresh my skills, get a certification, and also in the same breath, renew my previous Splunk certification. So I was able to get this done in a matter of, I'd say about two, three months or so while also doing my full-time job, you know, making content here as well and a bunch of other things, right? Other aspects of my life were on hold because I needed to take certification. So I think the advantage I had was the fact that I was using Splunk every single day. So everything I was learning, I was able to apply it to my job every single day, which I think is the best way to learn anything. So if you're in a situation, you're extremely fortunate. If you're not, definitely, definitely be out of Splunk Home Lab and make sure you have like a tenant at home. They are constantly applying and practicing the things you're going to be learning on your journey to pass the Splunk power user. Now I've made a video about the Splunk core user. You can check that out. But in order to pass a power user, I'll show you exactly what what I used. I used just a single resource, actually two resources, and that was more than enough for me to pass the exam on my first attempt. Let's get into it. Now, the single and only course I used to pass this certification was this Splunk Core Certified Power User by Haley Shaw. Haley is amazing at teaching Splunk, and I believe right now she works at Google or Mandiant on their security team. So that goes to show, you know, she knows what she's doing. But this course basically has, I believe, 40 something modules. Uh, yeah, 41 lessons that covers pretty much everything you need to know about the Splunk core power user. And I'd also say it could also help you with the Splunk core user, but more so for the power user, I would say, because it's it's zero to power user. You know, that's what it's actually called. But yeah, this is a very comprehensive course, covers everything. I didn't use anything more than this. I just learned what I learned from this and then applied it immediately to what I was doing at work and it helped it stick. Uh, I took a couple of notes as well. And yeah, basically everything you need to learn about for Splunk. So installation of Splunk, knowledge object, objects, fields, SPL, transforming commands, manipulating data, eval, where, and search. This is super important. Lookups as well. I use lookups a lot. Charts, right? Stats, visualizations, dashboards, reports, drill downs, alerts. It doesn't go too deep into alerts because I don't think the power user actually cares too much about uh, alerts, but tags, events, macros. Those are super important. I use macros all, this, all the time. So it goes into that, how to make a macro, workflows to save your time, normalization, troubleshooting, data models, and the common information model and a bunch of other stuff. This course is about 4.5 hours, but it took me much longer than that to finish it because I was both listening in, taking notes and also applying as I was learning to work. So not just in the context of the course. And that really took a bit of time, but it really helped me like solidify things. I took a good amount of notes and I learned a lot of things that, you know, I've, I've been applying, you know, every single day at work. So it's a great course. I think it's honestly, personally, I, that was the only thing I used to take 
the certification. And in regards to practice exams, I'll show you what I used here in a second. I used this practice exam here again on Udemy. Both links for the Splunk Udemy course and the Splunk practice exam will be in the description below. But yeah, this has five practice tests and these are really great for preparing for your exam. It starts with uh, 20 questions, then 25, and then a 65 question set. So this gives you everything you kind of need to, you know, prep your mind mentally in regards to what to expect in the exam. It's very realistic. It's very much model pretty close to what you would expect in the exam. And that's really about it. I think this is a fairly straightforward certification, not too complex if you use Splunk regularly. Um, if you don't, it might be a little bit of a snag for you. If you're not familiar with like Sims and you're not familiar with like data analysis tools and big data tools, you might have a little bit of ramping up to do, but I think it's still quite enough for you to get into understanding Splunk and also passing this exam. I will preface this by saying and contextualize this by saying that I've been working in cybersecurity for almost five years now. I've used Splunk for a good amount of my career but I've also used other sims and worked on the actual infrastructure and back end of some sims. So I have a good amount of experience with sims. So understanding the concept and transferring them between different platforms was not too hard for me. So day to day thing, you know, it shouldn't be too hard for you. So that's really what you need to pass the Splunk Core Certified Power User Certification. And that's really it for this video. So like I said, I'm a security engineer and I've been doing this for almost five years. So if you're looking to learn more about some actual truths and realities of what I do on a day to day basis and what my role really looks like in reality, then definitely check out this video on the right of the screen where I go over some realities of my day-to-day -day job as a cybersecurity engineer, especially at a fan company. Or you can actually check out this video on the left side of the screen where I actually go through an end-to-end -end investigation within Splunk where I show you how an attacker sneakily tried to bypass Microsoft Defender. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.